there are so many reasons why women and men come here, but in most of the times, the same reasons as men come here is political persecution. And then there are those reasons that are specifically for women, which is gender-related persecution. There's a culture of disbelief in the home office that even if women have disclosed the most traumatic conditions that they've gone through in their home countries, the home office still don't believe them. Most women are not regarded to be politicians. I think they believe it's just a man who is supposed to be a politician, not a woman. And uh, if, say, FGM uh, or rape, it's not looked at as a form of persecution. It's just one of those things that will happen to anybody and then it passes. The asylum process is really complicated. Women can be in limbo for quite so many years. Uh, in my case, I was in limbo for over six years awaiting the Home Office decision on my case. The most painful bit in the process of seeking asylum is going through your story over and over and over again for you to be believed. At least if one or two things could be granted to asylum seekers is to have a fair hearing for women and to remember that these people have gone through so much and the last thing they need is not to be believed. And to have good lawyers, basically, uh, where legal aid is cut, it is very, very hard to get a very good solicitor for an asylum seeker. And that is the core of somebody getting stay. If you have a rubbish lawyer, that means your case is going to be turned down. If you have a good lawyer, then the chances are that you'll be granted stay. Basically, what I would want to see change is the attitude of how Home Office treat asylum seekers. Um, they shouldn't treat them as numbers. Behind every number, there's a person, and that person has a story to tell. It does not matter what kind of story it is, but somebody should listen and give a fair judgment of someone's case.